how long did it take to get the Hilo from Kona? Well, if you want to go to go to Hilo, uh, you uh, you go to, on the go to Kau and go to Hilo way. But if you don't if you don't have flat tire, it takes you about six hours. You know? And if you have a flat tire, well, I don't know, maybe it took you another couple of hours because you they don't you you carry a spare tire but not on the rim. You have to fix them right on. You have the tools and everything. You have to fix them there, and they have a hand pump. You know, not like today. You just go there and press the button and the hair come out there. But this year you get all hand pump. So, uh, well, that's what I say. It takes sometimes. Many of them never come back the same day. They come back the next day. The roads are so damn bad that uh, and the Ford cars. You go up a steep hill, you have to jump off the, you, uh, the passengers walk up, and maybe one or two, the driver and others, go up the hill. So, I can up the hill. The road was, oh. I said the road was so bad that they can't do that. Yeah. How old did you have to be to get a driver's license? Fifteen years. But uh, you can get a lot of people, they, they, they drive before that. I was 13 when I drove a car. One of the Model T. Not everybody can drive Model T today because uh, they have the clutch and the brake and everything is all on one pedal there. I went through a couple of gates. I went right through the garage when I learned. <laughs> Was it hard to learn how to drive one of those old cars? No. I, well, I say it's easy if you know how, but when you don't know, you want to go forward, you press the wrong, when you reverse, I tell him go forward, he reversed. <laughs> well, anyway, they, if you, you, you want to, you got to learn, people got to teach you. you know. The hand brake and the, the foot brake and the, the hand brake, they're all on one lever, you know, the only way, how you pull the thing. Can you tell us about the first time you drove a car? Well, when I, my, my dad bought, bought a Ford, one of those homemade uh, uh, Ford trucks, you know, one of those old model, model T. So um, somebody had to use them, this was old second hand or maybe third hand already, There's no top, no body on them, and just the just engine part and they put a wooden body in the back, yeah. So, well, had a driver there. He, he knew how to drive. Uh, comes up every day. But he don't stay with us. Only once in a while he comes there when he want to use the car. So, uh, well, my dad said, well, go learn how to drive that car. So I go with the driver. He teach me how to drive. But, you know, drive, then you get nervous. Uh, we don't drive on the road. We go in the pasture. I mean, we had corn field. We used to plant corn. We go there and load this truck up. Otherwise, you got to pack the corn on your, on your back and all the shell, uh, the corn with, with the uh, nut shell, you know. Then you take them to the uh, corn bin and pile them up and they dry them up. So, but I see the, uh, learn how to drive and as I say, I went through the gate one time, I hit the gate and couldn't stop, keep it going. Then I uh, went through the garage two times. The garage. Well, those days, wherever, some old building, you go put your car in there, and I got just, no, no cement flooring. I just dirt, and you go downhill, and you step on the, step on the brake, you step on the low gear. You want, one is low, you see, you, and you want to, you go halfway, and that's neutral. But if I got you, see a car going too fast, you press away, and you keep it going, you don't stop. <laughs> what was the speed limit back then? Well, there was no speed limit. Could you go left back? Well, they go, people, they, they never, well, they, people were pretty careful. You can't speed, there, there was no straight road. And you, you, one thing, you have to have a horn on the car. There's no such thing as going without a horn. Because they were pretty strict about that because every curve you go, 
You go this curve, you toot the horn, if the other guy coming from there, he toots the horn, or one guy got to stop. So, so now, uh, just, uh, you don't go over the hill, there no, you, you, there no, uh, no uh, equipment to uh, cut through the hill, you have to go around the hill, and that's why you go around one curve, and then you, there's another hill that you go around. I can take you down here and you show you right over here where to go over, over the hill around the place and you come back almost the same place you know, you know? and it, some of the and when they paved the road you see uh, they used to pave well just uh, where the wheel and the, some of the pavement still there yet with the old road yeah how do you know? Did many people ride bikes or horses back then? Well, horses, yeah, horses and donkeys. There's a lot of, pretty near every farm had one or two donkeys. But the, uh, the uh, that was the main thing. The, the, the animal, donkeys, bicycle. You can't ride bicycle on this. There was no road like today. The worst road we have today is the best road in those days. Um, how did people travel to Honolulu and the mainland? What's that? How did the people travel to Honolulu and to the mainland? Oh, Honolulu, we had, every 10 days you get a steamer comes up from Honolulu, bring your freight, bring your mail up, every, every 10 days, there's the old Manoloa. It comes up to, to start uh, over in Malcona, you know where's Malcona, and it comes quite high. And you get to Kailua, Kyoho, and Napopo, and come to Hokena. And uh, from there on it goes, uh, I think Hopulo had one spot there. Then they go to Kau for the horse, they have sugar from Kau. They go back, they load up, then they come back here. And if it's uh, stormy, they, they, they have all the robo, you know. You know, the robot. There's no such thing like today. And they, um, they come up, and they, they, they had every every port had a had a, a post office too. So they got the mail there. And they, they go to the rough. They just put the horn, blow the whistle, and they keep on going. They go to Kau, and and uh, on the way back. After one or two days over there, and they come back on their way back. And they, if they if come, they drop your mail here. And it's rough, keep it going. They don't come. You wait another ten days. And that's the way you go. Like Christmas time is always rain here. Every time, no, I mean rough. Well, we have rain and uh, rough seas, so the boats don't ever stop. Where were the major harbors in Kona? Well. Uh, well, they were all about the same, all that play. Of course, Kailua was uh, about the biggest when they, uh, main harbor in Kona, you know, Kailua, Napopo. They had American factors here in those days. They had a big, uh, big store, you know, and they lumber too, they bring lumber. Where were the airports on the big island in the 1930s? Yeah, I think it's the uh, only airport we had in here. Yeah. Were there any trains here then? Anyone? Any trains here then? Well, no, not on this side, on the Hilo, Hamakua. One time we had train here by the plantation. We had plantation here too, the sugar cane. And uh, the plantation in the middle was down above Kailua. With Konawana, now that was all sugar cane up in Konawana and all through there, that was all cane fields. And below where Jack's, uh, where Jack's house up here, and Jack Greenway's house, that was the end of the train track. They didn't all no passengers, just all cane. What were the major kinds of employment in Kona in the, in the 1930s? Well, they had a little bit. Uh, the main thing is the coffee pickers. That's uh, one of the doing the coffee season. Coffee. And other than that, why road labor? You get about three days a week, or sometimes they work. But if you, yeah. 
all depends how much money the county put out. The, 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 uh, uh, depend on the taxpayers too, you know, whether they, they, they have more money, they put more money, they, that's only, that, that was the main thing about labor here, yeah, there's no other kind of work. Huh? Was there a lot of unemployment in the corner, in corner then? Yeah, well, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 unemployment. Well, they, they, if you want to go work for 50 cents a day, go ahead, there's plenty of that kind of work, or in, in a coffee field, and, and uh, those days, they, <coughs> there's no such thing as bulldoze where they level the ground out, they go and pick rocks and make stone walls and all that stuff. There was a lot of stone work, uh, uh, pick the stone from your coffee field and like that, and, but other than that, there was no other. And when it, when they when they build a school schoolhouses, was getting they uh, they had contractors coming to build the schoolhouses for school people, and, and, uh, and that's why I learned like carpenters. I I worked with a contractor. After cowboy, I thought, well, I better get I raise a family. You can't live on a cowboy's salary. So the old contractor, he saw me work in the yard one day, and he stopped me. Asked me to go work for him. Yeah, I for him. Got two dollars and a half. Uh, better than cowboy. Yeah. So that's how I got in. I, I worked 13 months with this contractor, and he moved the helo. So he asked me to, if I want to go with him. I said no. I have family. I got to stay here. So but right after he moved away, I got the county hired me. You know. So they, and I was, uh, I used to take care of all the, mostly work with the corner wine, they should be new, they always adding on every year, they more, more uh, students, so they have to have a, more room for them, see, yeah, school, and then they have the teachers come from the mainland, they couldn't, uh, there was no place for them to live, so they have built school cottages, so they still some of the cottages of corner wine, but I think now they're using for classroom. Why may they have some cottages like that for the teachers? Okay. Yeah, that's uh, four, four rooms in a, in, a, in a cottage. So teachers all these people, well, they come here, they're single, so each one has a room. Huh? <coughs> and uh, that was the main thing here. Yeah? And then there was no, otherwise uh, teachers won't come here. You have to build a cottage. You know? What was that Okay. Yes. One man carpenter. One man. Only time I got a helper when I put the roof up. And all this lumber was cut by hand, you know? Oh, no. No, no such thing as as uh, power tools. Or they never have electricity until in the fifties when we got it. Okay. Yeah.
He said the word of papaya. Oh boy. I don't know, focus on my
You want a soda? They have welfare and unemployment conversation and food stamps back then? Yeah, we had welfare, yeah. We had welfare, but uh, different from what they have in today. We uh, had just a uh, lady came from, uh, well, originally I think she was from um, uh, Hilo. She was a lineman girl. And she went away, went to school, and so she came back. And she was stationed here, up at uh, Corner One, up here. She was here. But, uh, they were, they helped the, the, uh, the old people. They come around and they visit people. They come around, like I used to be on Kelly. They come to me and ask me, well, who you think needs some help like that? So I point out whatever I thought people really need help. They can help. They give them, they give them, they give them, they give them milk and, uh, well, I mean, just powdered milk, you know, and, uh, well, whatever other things, so much the peanut butter and all that kind of stuff. There was okay. no money, there was no money for food. What kind of work was there for kids? What kind of work was there for kids? What? Work for kids. What kind of work? Oh, for kids, yeah. Well, they can pick coffee, during coffee season, they go pick coffee. Other than that, well, there was no work for the children. No work. Was there much tourism then? Much what? Tourism. Poison. Tourism. Oh, tourism. Tourism. Yeah. There was, there was a little bit. There was only two hotels here. They, um, up here at Monago Hotel. And um, we have uh, Hololoa, they had Inaba Hotel, and Kailua, we had, that was a big hotel on Kailua Quay, and yeah, that's the only hotel we had here. So the uh, tourists come to Hilo, from Hilo they drive this way. Well, I mean, they, they had two tour car to bring them away. Well, they go straight to Kona Inn. Uh, Who got the best jobs back then? Okay. Who got the best jobs back then? Oh, best jobs? Well, there's no, no such thing as best jobs around here. They're all the same kind of road. Road, road, they have road labor. Yeah, yes, you call that, you know, the common labor, that's about all. The county pay, county, they're on a county payroll like that, that's about jobs. What kind of stores were in Kona during the 1930s? Well, they had some small Japanese stores, Chinese stores. Uh, the, the big store was Milk and Factor, that's all. They had one in Kailo, one in Kailo. But those stores, they, they were big, uh, a big firm. They, they furnished, the, the little store buy it from them, then they, and they, they, um, they, they pay back all in coffee. The coffee farmers sell their coffee to the little Chinese, the Japanese stores, and from there they sell it. Where did you buy your food at first? Oh, food we buy it from the little store there. Yeah. They didn't order, otherwise they didn't know where to eat. You can go to, the American factory was down at Napopo and the other, uh, Kailua, there's no way to get there unless you uh, rent a car or something like that. How much did common foods cost back then? Well, rice was the main food here. Those days, rice was two dollars, two dollars, about two dollars and twenty-five cents a hundred pounds. 
know, sugar, rice, and whatever, whatever. Of course, Hawaiian mostly ate the poi they made. They had taro. Everybody had taro patch. Do they have car dealerships back then? Electric? Car dealerships? Oh, car dealerships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Captain Cook. They were agent for the Ford company. Were houses and property expensive then? Well, I don't know. At that age, maybe that was high. You would say high at that time was high price, you know, but uh, compared with today, why they were just giving them away to the land those days. This land here, even this was way up in the, in the 50s, and it was selling at $500 an acre. Yeah? And you were still out in the sticks there. The lava flow out there, after the lava come down, you can buy the land there maybe. Twenty-five dollars an acre, fifty, fifty dollars. Today they're up in a thousand of dollars. You know. So. Now, if you wanted to buy land back in the 1930s, how would you go about? If you wanted to sell land, buy or sell land, how would you? Well, you just put a sign out there for sale, and whoever passed by, they come down. This guy, my neighbor down here, the father of this boy down here. He owned a lot of this land here. There were three brothers. They owned all the land right up to the forest here, right through here. And uh, the Japanese farmers, they uh, they bought up a lot of this land here. They, they those land was all cut up in uh, five acre lots, you know, five acres. And well, they pay five hundred dollars, some of them less than hundred. Some of the places even on the house lot they sell them maybe a hundred dollars. Yeah. Do people often trade things instead of buying with money? Did people um did people often trade things instead of buying with money? Oh well they trade the like coffee, they trade coffee, they trade tarot, the tarot people, they trade uh, with the store, they go to the store. The store bought most all that stuff again. Yeah. There's not much to trade. Right? People raise chickens. Well, they they sell the chickens, or they eat up poultry or whatever else. Pigs, same thing. They 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 every farmer had some pigs. You know, they they, they butcher their own poultry. What were some tropical foods that you and your family ate? Food. Morning we have cereal, we drink milk, and tea, and plenty of milk. Everybody had milk in car on the place. All the milk, cakes. They all drink milk, but they hold up. Did. We never drank coffee. We, we uh, until we got old. Well, after you, you, well, you maybe you say about 12 years old before they let you drink coffee. If you drink tea. Who had electricity corner in the 1930s? Electricity, very few people had. The only people had electricity, the so-called richer people. You know, people had money, they had, they, they had, they had, uh, they owned generators, they make their own electricity. Okay. How about telephones? Did many people have telephones? Well, they, if, uh, you know, Around the surrounding, just maybe one house have a telephone, and they all, well, the rest of the people, they all come there. Yeah. They use it. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's, well, I guess if it's the only time they need a telephone, they call for help for uh, doctors. And, and we never have no doctor here. The doctor would come from Honolulu. You see, if you get in number, he tell you he, he's, um, his father was a in now, but his father was a doctor out there. But they, then they come with a, not to drive a car, on a buggy, you know, with a hat, come down with a horse Who was the leader of your household during the 1930s? I was the leader. I was the leader of my house. <laughs> my wife was. <laughs> what kind of home chores did, you, did kids do in the Kona? In Kona during the 1930s. What kind of what? Home chores. Well, everybody had their own little community. If you have, you, the, the 
boys that take care of every, most everybody raises chickens, and pigs, and all that. Well, the, the, uh, the pigs, they, they all pick up papayas, a lot of papaya fruits and all that, pears, and, and uh, they have all the food. Well, that's the boys, that's their choice. They go take care of all that outside. And uh, the girls, they take care of the housework. Was there much alcohol in the Kona during the 1930s? Well, there was very little. There was a little bootleg of it on a little bit, but people, they made their own little flicker right at home. They used to make it out of, well, some of the people make them out of rice, I think, or whatever it is, and uh, doing cactus season. Cactus, you know it's cactus? Well, cactus, they make swipe out of that cactus too, you know. And they, every Saturday, the drinkers, well, they, today, this Saturday, probably go, they have groups all over. Well, maybe this Saturday, go to my place, next time they go to your place, and, and rotate it around, you see. But, there's no, nobody got really drunk in the place, how they, just social. Did people get married early in the 1930s? Well, I don't know, I don't think so. I can just say this to the end. <coughs> Did many people marry outside the racial groups in those days? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If the married couple argued a lot, how did they resolve the differences? Well, I don't know about that. <coughs> I don't know. The people, they, those days, they, 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 they never quarrel much because they, they live a ripe old age. They, they, you never hear about divorces you know, anything like that. So it must be all you know. yeah. The mind was all on their children, they raised their children. Every family had a big you know, big families, you know. And everybody helped one another. They, the, the, the big uh, the older kids they take care of the younger ones. That's a, a lot of children those days. talk about roads, well, those days we never have any roads like this. There's no paved roads in Kona. <coughs> See, let's say you, you go up or go around and go around the turns. That's all you go around to all they had. From my house over Kelly to Papa, they had 500 turns. Because the engineer came here and he, one day I asked the engineer, how many turns are it? Because they said, well, we, we put in this new alignment and we, we're going to eliminate uh, call half of the curves. I said, how many curves you get here? He said, 500. So you couldn't take out half of the curves. Big deal, huh? You take half. <laughs> <coughs> well, you can see how the road now, you see, you see all those cuts, huh? Before, you see all those going through, you see all those cuts. Huh? Well, they either go way, the old road go way down or way up on a hill, you see. You could take the old roads over here. Most of the old roads, I could take you to show the old road there. They, some half a mile away from the main highway. When you come from Kalia, you see there's a, that little store, that Higashi store. The main road was below that, below there. It come down and go down and come out by the by the painted church. But that was the main road. Go to Hilo, you see. Go over there. The and, but it, yeah. You see, that's the main highway, you go down. Uh, but uh, it's not on the, from Kelia coming this way, the road is below, below all the houses. When did they pave the, the main highway? Well, uh, you know, in different times, you know, they, uh, let's see, uh, uh, up here, they, they take care up here first, you see. From uh, <coughs> Maud Greenwood's house down to the, to the Paris house, the other green road down there, so that was the main road. So just where the corner of the butcher shop now. Yeah. yeah. Just a little bit on. not even to the bank. Up there. Down past uh, Paris. Past, uh, past Arthur Greenwood. Go down and uh, that was the end of that pay road. And uh, Kailua, they had them down from 
from Kailua Courthouse up to uh, the railroad track, or they had a railroad track. Well, it, one of the supervisors used to live up there, and down below was another place, so he had a road paved right up to his house. You see. <laughs> On the weekends with your family, would you take any trips weekends with your family? Well, weekends, <clears throat> either go down the beach or take them up the mountain somewhere. You know, the um, those who have cars, we always had a car. You see, when I had a family, and um, well, my wife, the, she belonged to the, she was a beach girl. You see, she liked the beach. They'd take the kids down there and teach them. We have a picture show where they take them out. Then. Uh, anything doing like when they had a volcano up at uh, Mount Law, went down to that Homoula side. Well, I took the kids up there on Christmas. Uh, day after Christmas, we went up there to see that. And all that kind of, you know, you go out, well, they have Fourth of July, so they have something that's different outside if you go there. Do you have fireworks on the Fourth of July? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fire. A lot of people have Christmas trees and exchange Yeah, Christmas. everybody has Christmas trees. Yeah. They, they, they respect those uh, holidays. And Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving too. Thanksgiving, you families would get together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the pe people here, they were, they were uh, pretty religious people. They go to church every Sunday. They, like if you went out for some uh, <clears throat> you want Sundays, the early in the morning they go to church first. They, they had uh, they had the Protestants here, the Catholic and the Mormon. There were three different religions. Yeah. Yeah. So this they, all of the, the Catholic people they go down to this church here. But every little district all had church too. Like uh, uh Hokena, you been to Hokena Beach? Way down the beach? Hokena? Yeah. Well, there's an old uh, Protestant church down there, kind of demolished now. Then further in, there was a Catholic church there. Yeah. When I came here, then. during the 1950 big earthquake, well, that uh, uh, demolished that one down Hokena. Yeah. Then uh, they had uh, the old Hawaiian, they had Hawaiian school too. Okay. Hawaiian, they, they teach Hawaiian, I guess, during that time. Well, when I came here, I found no more Hawaiian, but the old building's still around. Were there ever any, um, I don't know, um, any hostilities between different racial groups? Well, they, yeah, they, 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 somehow some of the people never agree with some of the other nationalities, you know, they kind of, they cross, they, you know, they go, I don't know, they, well, run our place, you're not so bad, but you hear from other people. <coughs> and, uh, they, uh, other than that, well, I don't know, well, like, we, we live a good life down here. I have no kick as far as, you know, you're working all the time, no time to fight with other people. <laughs> Was there any, um, Prejudice, any racial prejudice back in the 1930s? Yeah, 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 there was the, the, uh, the, the Howley group, they stuck by themselves, you see. They go, they have their own church, and the Hawaiians, well, they stuck to the Hawaiian church. Of course, the, the Japanese, they have their Japanese church, everywhere you find a little place, you know, they, they all have, but, uh, I don't know about the, old, the young people. They all got together. They go to the same school, but they all. Yeah. Yeah. But only nowadays, the only thing I see is different. I think uh, they're wrong. You know, maybe I should. Uh, they don't respect the flag today. They don't respect the. the uh, they don't have a morning. Uh, you know, uh, uh, they just bell ring or whatever. They walk right in. They don't even stand in line. They don't even respect it. Flag. They don't. Re they don't have no morning uh, prayer. You know, before you know, that bell ring and by God, everybody stop. Look at flags, no matter where you are. Even the working people, they all stop. You know, contractor when he 
hear that bell. Oh, 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 that's the first thing you say. Salute the flag, you know. There's an old Englishman, you know, big old Jim Lewis, big guy. And he was a rough guy, but he respected the flag every time. And he always tell us. And all the kids, no matter what they're playing outside, when that bell rings, they all stop. The bugle blow, and they, there they go in the classroom, they, they, they did a ceremony prayer before they so oh, yeah, I came here in 66. <coughs> it mopped on the cement. <coughs> I built this house myself. Yeah. One man. Yeah. Nice house. The only time that I put the roof on. Well, the other boys came. I didn't have to pay them. They all they come volunteer. This, uh, Japanese boy used to work with me when I was in the county, you see. I used to take care of the schools, roads, everything. You know, I don't know wherever I wouldn't work, they put me in charge of it. When they told me, the day I was through with the contractor, I was at that weekend, I mean, when he said he was going to heal, and there said, no more job here. Yeah. Two days later, Julian Yates, he was just, he said, hey, well, he said, uh, you know, Bill of Crusher? I never seen a rock or a crusher before. I seen him in a distance. Not well. I said, well, you got a plan, maybe I can build him. Yeah. He said, well, we want to build a crusher down here on the road. That's when they paved that road down here. Yeah. Napopo. He said, we got to build a crusher. I said, well, get the plan. I see. He said, well, our car will come in over tomorrow. He'll be here to bring the plan. I said, then he said, when he get here, he'll meet him up in Managua. And when I was big now before it's small. I went up there and he said, here's the plan and all that. Put him down the road. And then he said, well, <coughs> he said, uh, you, for the bill of credit, you get Joe Gasper to work with you. But Joe Gasper used to work with me with the same old contractor there. And he was much older than I was. So I said, okay. So I got a hold of Joe and I said, Joe, you have a bill of crusher? He said, no, I know. I, I don't know what's inside the credit, you know. I said, well, we're going to build a crusher. And he said, well, okay. So I recall, give me the plan and all that. And they, well, the, the material all coming. They, they have everything all. Yeah. And then the timber, there's all 14 by 14, 16 by 16, and uh, uh, 6 by 12, uh, uh, the joists. And uh, I said, I said, oh, yeah, we're going to cut all this stuff here. We don't take no power or anything. He said, yeah, I, I got one of those cross-cut wood saws. And I said, yeah, bring that up with So we, we built a crusher down here. The foundation is still there on that Napopo road. Right off the side there. This is a rock crusher. Rock crusher. Did it work? Did it work? <laughs> and put, I put the bunkers up. And I saw the H, I said, say, no. I said, I get all the bunkers. I get everything already. Now all that uh, the screen and all that stuff. I, I said, that part. Who's going to go on the crusher? He said, oh, we got this Tuni and uh, another guy, uh, Sasaki. I said, well, he said, well, you call him up. Then. So I call him up, and by gosh, they come down, they set everything. I, they all I do is put that rack with the belt on. We had a, a Fordson engineer to put a pulley on him, had a pulley on him, and he put the belt on him. Was still all around there. We had all the people in the country around there watching the thing work. It worked. We finished all that road down there. <laughs> and you see that, you know, the. to me, I think that was the best president we ever had, that Roosevelt, President Roosevelt. Yeah. Because he came here and he, his Mahuka Spencer was a, was a, well, he was like the mayor on this island, you see. Well, he, Spencer met the, the president at Hilo, wherever he came in. And he came all through, the, went the whole island, see? That's why you go down down at uh, quite high, see that pavilion in there? You see a plaque in there, Sam Spencer and uh, Roosevelt. Yeah. And, uh, well, when he was over there, and I met the president, 
когда мэр, чермен Марокен, мы были просто семьей. Когда он уезжал, он приезжал в мою комнату. Он любил меня, я любил его. И так я... Well, I, whatever I wanted from the board, I can always I see him. He said, you could see the other boys. Yeah. The people here in Hawaii, did they vote in the national election? Oh, yeah. They yeah. voted for Roosevelt and those guys? Yeah. 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 And, uh, okay, I think we better stop. Okay. Yeah, can you tell us something about the hat? You see this hat here? It's made out of a wild bull. Hide. We caught up in a mountain. We caught this bull up there. I saved the hide. I made a uh, rawhide uh, lariat with it. And uh, this was the, the kind of balance from the hide. I made several hats. And a friend of mine, he, he was the one that uh, made these hats. And uh, I said, just to remember that bull, that's what we, we made these hats, you see, just to to uh, show people what you can do out of it, all these hides up the mountain. And this was alum cured, you see? And uh, that's why now this is made, well this hide, this hat is over 10 years now. So more than 10 years old. Did you folks used to make a lot of things out of uh, leather? Oh yeah, make skin ropes. And, you want to see my lariats and all Sure, you got a lariat? Oh, I got I, yeah. I'll show you. Cow hide and braided by four strands. Okay. Here's the, we never used to use manila ropes or any kind of uh, rope or we 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 are every every cowboy here uh, had a one of those uh, rawhide ropes. Okay. And you you have to every now and then grease them up to get them soft. Okay. Did, you, uh, did you make that look? Oh, I made this myself. That, that's what I do. I, I make all skin work. I got all kinds. I made, made, uh, make those uh, hackamores and fix my own saddles. I have saddles in the back there. All kinds of saddles. And when you were a cowboy, did you used to lasso cows with this? Oh, yeah. can beat this. Okay. Can you last with that, that boy back there? Oh gosh, yeah. Stand up. Easy, easy. Zoom easy. out now. You gotta zoom out. I don't want to, I don't want to hit him on the head. Either. Yeah? You want me to cut you? Wait a minute. This rope never been used a long time ago. Oh, wait. Hart! Get out of there! Never been used a long time. Oh, no. Okay. Now, what do you want me to cut you? Your hand, feet, the whole body? I don't care anything. All right, you just stand there. Shut your eyes. <laughs>